I am going to say one little point about this. I am looking forward to uh, the learning the history of the moose. The, is it the moose building? We're doing the building. Yeah, good. The building. Right. Because I, I wasn't allowed in the moose <laughs> when I was a young kid. All right. Except for movies. And if our little league team, well, only when we played on the only when we played on the All Star, I was not a member of the Moose Giants. That was, and that was a lucky team because they got to go into the special area if they won a game, uh -huh. and they, even if they lost, and and got ice cream, which all the other teams were jealous of. But uh -huh. when we were on the All Star team, we got to do that. So I got to go into whatever that room was um, that was away from. There was no adults in that room. It was uh -huh. just. It if, was just the, if you want to come take a tour afterwards, the the door is still down there that says no children allowed. I, I think I, I wherever it was, I, I well, you did give me a tour the one time, and we I kind of kind of through my mind remembered where it was, um, and it also and this is a confession since my dad's sitting here. <laughs> <laughs> I lied to him one time. <laughs> Wait a second! Is it the truth? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't the truth. Uh, it was a big deal to go to the Moose Theater on Friday night. That was on every kid growing up at, what, during my era. That was what's playing at the Moose. What's playing at the Moose? And you spend fifty cents to go in for the. You could take your your dollar and and get a ticket, and then you could spend fifty cents on popcorn or 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 candies. And uh, so I would always run up by by my parents about, hey, um, uh, so-and-so is playing, and uh, so is it okay if I go? And they would always ask me one question, and it was, is it rated R? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, no. <laughs> but the longest yard, the one with Burt Reynolds, <laughs> all right? Dad, it was rated R, and I went. <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hey, I'm one step ahead of you. I went to the moose every week when I was in, in the, it, and we practiced in that building. In the theater or just over the... Upstairs. Have an empty rated G these days. Okay. Um, today we have our own Jeff Kine, who was with the Marriage Hub. And he's going to talk to us about, as soon as I get this computer to cooperate with me. Uh, he's going to talk. Go. Is that, is that going to work for you, Jeff? That'll work. That works fine. He is with the Mary Chubb, and he's going to talk to us about the history of the building we affectionately call the Moose, but I think you call it the Elizabeth, right? We are, we are looking to change the That's That is right. Okay. All right. Go. Well, thank you. So, uh, I, let's see if we can get this up a little higher here. We're good? Yeah. Try not to touch anything. All right, we'll see what happens here. So, so to start this, I need to ask the question, is there anybody in here that is or was a former Moose member? All right, we got two of you. Current or former? Form, current, wonderful. Current, wonderful. Were you a member when this building was around? Yep. All right, very good, very good. So we got two people that were Moose members. Now the next question is, how many of you Raise of hands, saw a movie in this theater. All right, there, there's a good number of you. Next question, and uh, you might be answering this question. How many of you have been in the ballroom upstairs in the building? How many didn't know there was a ballroom up there? Hey, there you go. We're, we're catching some people here, okay? Now, I was told that for the longest time, the moose actually would never do R-rated movies. So they must have changed it at some point here. Now, I, I will warn you all that my history of this building does not go nearly as far back as many of your histories of this building. So there may be some things that I'm saying here, and you're looking at me saying, ah, I don't know. We've done a lot of our research. We've gone into newspapers. We've pulled as much information as we could to try and get history of this building. We've spent an awful lot of time talking to people, talking to members of the Moose, other people, to get as much information about this building as we could. So there, there is a very high possibility, though, that some of you may be able to you know, raise your hand and say, hey, wait a second, that's not what I remember. And I, I'll tell you right now, I'm perfectly fine if you stop me in the middle of this conversation and want to throw something out there as we're going through this. 
But I'd like to share a little bit about the history of the building. Uh, this is a watercolor image that we took of a rendering of the building as it was originally built. So fun information. Anyone know what year it was built? Not 23, but you're close. What'd you say? 25. Split the difference. 24. Well, let me get started here, okay? So to give a little idea, in 1973, 1793, and thank you. See, you can correct me often. All right, Deb, thank you, numbers person. We appreciate that you're good with that, okay? So 1793, there was a lady, Elizabeth Hughes, who actually ran the hotel that was located on that property. So prior to being the building that you guys see and that you know, there was a hotel that was on that property. Before that, it was part of the E-Town um, plot of land that was given out. But that hotel was a very, very popular hotel. There's all kinds of history about that building. But what we thought was really is interesting was Elizabeth Hughes actually ran the hotel under three different names because she had three different husbands that purchased the hotel and she outlived all three of them, which is somewhat intriguing. So we are actually, uh, as you said before, we are looking to change the name of the building. Where, and at some point, the sign will change on the front and everything there. Reason being, not that we have any problem with the moose, but the moose have moved. And when you go on to Google Maps and you type in Moose Lodge, the goal is that you go to the Moose Lodge, not to our building, vice versa. When people want to try and find us, you don't want them ending up down at the new Moose Lodge. It gets very, very confusing for what's taking place. So what we thought would be fun is to honor the Elizabeth, who was the original lady of the, the tavern area, that hotel back in the time. She was a, must have been a pretty incredible woman to outlive those three husbands, or she served them some funky mushrooms. I don't know. But needless to say, that's what we're shooting for for this. And this is another picture from the backside of that. Um, it was a three-story hotel that was on the property there. So I know we're getting ready to celebrate the 100-year anniversary of the E-Town Rotary, right? The moose is older. The moose in Elizabethtown started in 1911. And prior to them uh, being in the property that they are, they were over by where the dry cleaner is back in that area. Um, they had a property that they started with. And back in 1922, they purchased the Greenwald Hotel from Frederick Klein of the Klein Chocolate Company. So he was the owner of the property. And we were actually given a big old oil painting of Frederick Klein that's in our lobby right now from the Historical Society. They said, hey, here's an old owner. We have this great old picture. You should put it in your lobby. OK, <laughs> so we put it there. So um, Frederick Klein, there, there is history from that building to the chocolate company that was taking place there. So in 1923, the hotel was demolished, construction ensued. The Hoffer Brothers, anybody know the Hoffer Brothers Construction Company? Okay, they were the company that was uh, chosen to contract this building. And they had the local famous architect, C. Enlin Urban, who was the designer of this building. Now there's two other buildings that Urban designed in Elizabethtown. Most people know the one, not as many know the other. What's another Urban building? Gears. Gears, Poplar Street, right? So that building was done by Urban. Urban is considered Lancaster's most famous architect. He did the Watt and Shan building. He did the farmer's market. Um, he was very active at Hershey, Milton Hershey's mansion, tons of beautiful stuff. Um, incredible architect. Does anybody know the third building that Urban did? No? Thank you, John. The telephone building right next to Subway there on uh, on Market Street. Hey, I will tell you, we're sitting here talking at lunch. Every architect in their portfolio has some gems that are going to be in the There you go. That is true. So when Urban, when Urban was um, tasked with designing the building, the, they were told they wanted to have a large building that could handle the, the moose, which was a group that was growing rapidly. Um, they were one of the largest organizations in the E-Town area at that time that was of any civic type of a thing that was happening. They were upwards to 400 members back in that time frame and growing. 
as they were going through this. So they built this building. It had a bowling alley in there. They wanted the movie theater. They wanted a social hall for all the things that were taking place. And in 1924, the Moose actually moved into the basement of the building. They were in the lower level of it. And the theater was opened. The first movie that was shown was Little Old New York back in 1924, which is pretty interesting. Then what many people don't know is the building was actually built in two different phases. So the theater, the, the front, what I call the pretty part of the building, right? That most people look at and see, that part wasn't built originally. Originally, it was just the back third of their two thirds of the building that was there in place. They ran out of money and they said, we can only build a portion of it. So we wanna move our group into the basement. We're gonna have the theater available. And then a few years down the road, they built the front portion of it. So the second phase of construction, the ornate portion of the building, was perched or was finished, well, not totally finished, but it was in 1928. That included the lobby for the existing theater, retail space, and the large ballroom on the second floor. Now, I apologize if I'm in some of your ways. Can, can you guys see these pictures okay? All right, good. I don't want to touch anything or John's laptop's going to go haywire here. Now, I'm going to read something to you guys, which I thought was fun. We have a, um, a we, have, we were actually given one of the original programs from 1929. This was June 8th to June 15th of 1929. The Moose did their huge dedication of this building. And, and I have a copy of this. Um, an old Moose member actually gave me his, uh, his version of this that was passed down through some generations. And uh, this is the program that was put out there. What I think is really cool from doing some of the research with the newspapers and other things, they actually did a full week long celebration here in E-Town for the dedication of this building. Every single night they had events that were taking place. They had a parade that was going on. They claim there were over 4,000 people that were out for the, the building dedication that was taking place. So this was a pretty big, big deal that this building was done. And you guys can't read this, but on the inside of the program, what I thought I would do is I, I would try and read some stuff to you about what's taking place because I thought this is kind of interesting to hear what they had to say. Now, I can't read it on the little screen here, so I'm going to try and read it. Can you guys hear me if I talk out loud? Yeah. All right. So what it actually says as they're going through this, uh, it says, due to the rapid growth and membership of the order, their home, their original home that was just right down the block there was inadequate. So they recommended the purchase of the Greenwalt Hotel property, situated on the court corner of the Center Square and North Market Street. It was going to be 40,000 feet of ground. It says, during 1923, C. Emlyn Urban, architect of Lancaster, was employed to prepare plans and building operations were started for a new and more elaborate moose home. Under the leadership of D.H. Kreider, acting as the director, the old hotel building was demolished. Ground was broken for the erection of the first unit of the new home, which was the theater. And they talk about the size. They say it was created with the best possible material, steel, stone, cement, and the best lumber obtainable. The theater was completed the following year. On February 22, 1924, the order moved into the basement of the theater, which was equipped temporarily to serve as the home until the main unit of the home was completed. Now they had actually initially talked about making that a three or four story building, but then they cut back. So we do, we do see some interactions from back to that time that they were looking for some stuff. So the purchase of this plot of ground, erecting and equipping the theater, first phase, architectural fees and many other incidental, incidentals caused an outlay in funds of some $60,000, All right? Big deal back in the day. I didn't do the math. Maybe Deb can go out there and calculate what that would have cost today. But um, they say, due to these great expenditures, the officials deferred completing the home. And for more than five years, the basement of the theater was used for social quarters, lodge hall, banquet room, and all other special, other special occasions. The increase in membership continued. Financial returns were so encouraging that the order decided to erect the second unit of the home. Bids were asked, and during the early part of June 1928, the contract for erection of the second unit was awarded to Hoffer Brothers, who also erected the first unit. The contract bid price of the second unit, if you can see that, $29,722. All 
for the whole front end of that building. Man, yes. That's still cheap. That is still very cheap. Very, very cheap. So um, they say that the work on the second unit was started June 21st, 1928. The work moved forward rapidly. Tuesday, August 7th of the same year, the cornerstone was laid. I thought this is pretty intriguing. So they talk about who the people were that put a cornerstone in the building, and they say they placed the following articles in a specially built copper box, which is sealed inside the cornerstone. And inside the cornerstone of our building, there is a list of the members of the order, list of the officers of the order, list of the supreme officers. We're going up the, up the list there. Name of the contractor, constitution of their order, a copy of the resolutions authorizing the completion of the building, a copy of the contract, a moving picture program, so I'm, I'm assuming there was some kind of a program from the movie that was showing that week or something, the, uh, a copy of the Elizabethtown Chronicle, which is great, and a number of 1928 United States coins. So if I catch any of you digging into the, uh, the cornerstone trying to get the old coins, I did look it up. I don't think there's anything that's worth a ton, um, but stuff is in there. So they, they talk about this. They say the stone was lettered and donated by L.D. Coble of Elizabethtown. The copper box was donated by Gen Benjamin Dolson of Metaltown. Both members work progressed rapidly. The contractors used all their efforts to complete the large hall in order that the order could use the same and derive some revenue by renting, which is interesting. The philosophy of the group was to build a building big enough that they could rent out that space and have enough revenue generated from that building to make their order um, profitable as they were going through, because they were a not-for-profit in essence. Um, and they were very excited. It says the hall was completed during the early part of the fall of 1928 in time for the basketball season. So at some point, there must have been basketball nets upstairs in the ballroom. I have seen no history of pictures or anything of that nature. But if you have, if you want to come with me after we're done here, I'm willing to take anybody on a walkthrough tour of the building. And um, you can go up and see some of this stuff. It's kind of fun. So the balance of the building was completed as rapidly as possible, March 7th of 1929, when the contractors released the building to the trustees. And then they go through and they talk about all the different things that were part of the building. Some of the interesting stuff is they actually had a bowling alley in the building, down in the basement area. And I can show you where that was. We know where that is. Uh, sadly, the bowling alley went out of vogue a few years later when they wanted more space for drinking alcohol and it got turned into one like one large gigantic bar that was taking place down. Well, I guess one brought in more revenue than the other. I don't know. Can you guys hear me okay if I'm down here and looking? All right, perfect. So a couple other interesting pieces. In 1939, some of you guys, uh, we have lots of talk about the marquee. Save the marquee, it's historical. The marquee is not original to the building. So the marquee was added to the building in 1939. They did a big renovation of the place. And during that renovation, they actually put um, heating and air conditioning in there. They added new seats to the place. They put the neon lit signs out front. And, and this is my request to all of you, because I get this all the time. How many of you are ever in that theater and saw a movie? I was there, I was there. If any of you have any pictures of the inside of this building when it was a movie theater, I would love to get them. We have looked and looked and asked and talked to historical societies and, I mean, you name it, all the other places. This is the only picture that I've been able to find of the inside of the theater space. And that was from a newspaper back in 1939 when it was originally put out that this was the new chairs that were placed in there. And uh, they say there were 696 theater style seats that were inside that building. Other than that, I don't have a single interior picture of it when it was a movie theater. So, oh, he, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't want to show his parents he was in there. Um, and just some cool stuff. You know, this is a picture of what the, the marquee was looked like when it was lit up. Do any of you remember seeing the marquee lit up? 
in my estimation and from what I've heard from people, I don't think the marquee has actually been lit up since the 80s. So it, it has been quite a long time since it's there. It, has, it still has all the electricity stuff and some old knob and tube probably from the 30s. And some of the stuff's kind of crazy. I can walk you in the theater room. You can see all the fun stuff. But our dream is to get that relit up at some point. Is there a pharmacy next to it there? Yeah. yeah, so that front corner section um, was always set up as retail space. Like I said, the, the Moose purposely built the building with revenue generating in mind. So that front corner stuff was a pharmacy back in the day. There was a clothing shop that was in there at one point. E-Town Sporting Goods was in there for a while. Um, I've heard a few different people talk about little things. Shoe store of some sort was in there. Yeah, I, I've had different people talk to me and say our family had a business at, at one point. But the goal for that corner was always retail. And it was always something that could be used to generate profit for the moose as they were going through. Okay, there you go. See, I told you, you guys are going to know a lot more history than I will in this stuff. Um, but these are some of the few pictures I have of the front with some of the, some of you remember what it was like going up there, seeing, you know, the playbills and all the different things for the movies coming up. I've never seen anything. I've only seen pictures that we've been able to find. Um, I found some old fun pictures of the, uh, the building and some of the old history of E-Town. E-Town used to have a trolley that went down the center there and uh, just some cool stuff you know back when all the cars would park on the main street there and some of you might know that area was very well known for flooding so the little creek there between our building and uh, and rita's right along there the little chickies creek um the canoy creek i don't know we have canoy and chickies who knows i didn't write this somebody huh it's just canoy all right. So see, like I said, you guys can correct me all you want. I'm good with that. But that creek uh, apparently flooded multiple times. This was one of the more famous ones. We found some old pictures from 1945. There was a diner that was across the street. Baker. That Yeah, Baker's Diner. Apparently, the flood was so bad, it actually lifted the diner off of its foundation. And the whole there's pictures of this whole diner going down the street as it was being washed out in some different areas. So it, there were some pretty impressive floods during this time. There were some uh, in, incredible, uh, you know, high-end people that showed up on the building. We got a picture of King Kong there, which is kind of funny. If you read the whole article, it says King Kong was mad because they were showing Jaws that weekend. So he was standing on top of the building, raising his ire because he was frustrated that, that Jaws was out there. Um, you know, you got stuff of Red Skelton that you know movies that they were showing there's a little better picture so you can see the pharmacy that was taking place i've got a lot of great pictures of that kind of picturesque view of the building i don't have a lot of stuff of many of the other views of the building so the 1960s e-town high school used the building a lot um, some of you may have known people that were part of this i don't know maybe some of you are pictured in this picture but uh, E-Town used to hold their post-prom events up in the ballroom in the, the theater space that was in the upstairs area. Any of you go to a dance up there? No? All right. Well, we have, I have pictures of that room from dances that were there. The, I, I've had some older Moose members and other people from E-Town come up to me and say, oh, yeah, we remember the dances. They would have all the windows open up there. We'd have our legs sitting out one side. Nobody ever fell out of the building, but it was great. We had all kinds of wonderful times. This was a very, very happening place within the community. There was lots of events. There was lots of rental usage of the facility. There was lots of things taking place. People were in and out of this building on a, a very, very regular occurrence that was taking place. 1972, yes. Well, I, I don't know. I, I'm bad at marketing some of this stuff, but that, I was going to say that the club's doing some very generous stuff and working towards some things. So we got some things going. Um, Agnes was another huge flood that came in. We actually have a marker on our building with a high water mark from Agnes. I think there's probably a lot of you that remember Agnes. And 
you know, you, you can see tons of footage and other things that were happening. The problem with this building is that the basement level of the building covers the entire footprint of the building. It's about 9,000 square feet. Down in that basement area is where the moose had all their meetings like this. So they had their weekly meetings. They had their bars were down there. Um, originally, their bowling alley was down there. They had their game rooms. That's where they held all their beer, important stuff. You know, you don't want to lose that. And they ran into situations where that entire basement area turned into a 9,000 foot swimming pool multiple, multiple times. It got to the point where the entire area was underwater. I don't even know how many times, because we, we don't have records of all the floods, but we know of at least three major floods that took place. Sadly, um, the moose got sick of being down there in the flooded area, which you understand that, right? You got to deal with it. The thing gets soaked, destroyed. <clears throat> Um, one of the ways that they dealt with restoration in the basement area, when stuff would get destroyed, they put a new layer in front of the old layer. So when, when we were in the basement, we found out that there were multiple layers of walls, multiple layers of ceilings. Um, I, I don't know if anyone's in the restoration world, but you know what it's like if you're dealing with restoration, you're supposed to rip out what was there originally and put in new not all of that seemed to take place with the moose. And the area downstairs got pretty rough over time. Again, I was never there during its heyday. I, I don't know enough about it. But the, the moose also ran into another issue that in the early 80s, the theater went out of business. So you have local cineplexes, right? The, the one that just went out of business up the road. Um, but those places ate the E-Towns, you know, movie theater stuff for lunch. When you can have six, 10, 13 screens, and you're showing all kinds of stuff, and you've got much more modern things that are taking place, more comfortable seats. The, the, the moose were not able to keep up with that, and they had a couple things all going at the same time. They finally said, you know what? We're sick of dealing with being in the basement. The theater is not making any money for us. So in the early 80s, they shut down the movie theater. I was told that you can date it to Star Wars, the first and second Star Wars were shown in the theater. By the time the third one came out, it was defunct. And they, they didn't have any showings taking place there. So what they did during that time frame is they said, hey, we're going to be celebrating the big 100-year anniversary of Moose. So again, in the whole 100-year things of Rotary and that kind of stuff, they put together a really big push. They said, we need to do something significant. We need to get out of this basement as part of our 100-year anniversary for the Moose organization. Let's put in a big fund. Let's see if we can do some renovations. And during that time, they remodeled the first floor of the building, or the main floor, because they used to call the basement the first floor. But the main floor got remodeled. They pretty much shut the doors to the basement, even though there were still some people that went down there and did things. The basement was not used in any significant way. They shut down the movie theater. And instead of having a sloped floor with all of the theater style seating, they got rid of all of that. And how many of you have been in the building in its current configuration? You, you know what I'm talking about? It has tiered seating now. So if you can imagine a dinner theater type of a feel where you have you know, different sections that go down, tables, chairs, all that kind of stuff in place. So they also got rid of the kitchen. Well, they didn't get rid of the kitchen. They shut the kitchen that was in the basement, and they put in a commercial kitchen up on the first floor. The other thing that that did by putting in the commercial kitchen is right up here, so this is the building. There's the front part, the pretty part of the building that you see. Back here is where they put the commercial kitchen for the building. When they did that, they got rid of the emergency escape that was on the back side of the building, and in essence, they shut the ballroom from that point forward from the 80s as well. Again, my hunch is there were some things, little things up there, you know, different stuff that was going on over the years. But for the most part, the ballroom that was up there was not used for anything significant from the early 80s on. And again, I'm looking to my moose guys, correct me if I'm wrong here, but that, that's the story that I've heard and that's the conversations that we've had. So you now have a building with the 3,200 square foot ballroom upstairs is pretty much vacated. You have the 9,000 square foot basement that's pretty much vacated. 
the moose said, we're just going to move everything up to this main floor, and it became members only in what they were doing for the most part. The front area, um, this section that used to be where the pharmacy was, and it, it used to be where they had you know, some different stores, E-Town Sporting Goods, they converted that whole section into their bar. So the basement where they had the large bar kind of shut, they moved it all upstairs. And some of you know well, that apparently, and again, I'm going off stories. So tell me if I'm wrong here. But from what I've heard is the windows that were in the front there that you look in. So when you see these windows up front here, the moose basically said, we don't really want people just sitting there staring at us while we're drinking. So they converted, they got rid of those windows. The original top ones were still there. They got rid of those windows, and that's where the big blue panels came. You guys remember the blue panels that were there? So that got turned into the blue panel era, and this place pretty much, the building got turned into a members area only. Not that they didn't do events. They had some other stuff going on, bingo, other things. But for the most part, the large amount of community usage stopped at this point. So. That kept on happening over the next almost 40 years, and the numbers of the moose dwindled, 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 dwindled. The moose is not a 400-person group anymore. You guys are current members. Do you have any idea what the numbers are now? I heard somewhere around 80, 85, but that, is there more than that? Okay. I just know when we were at closing and talking to them, I mean, they mentioned that the numbers could not justify the size of the building anymore. And the additional revenue opportunities that the building had from the movie theater, from rental space, they couldn't justify the upkeep of the building. It just they, they weren't able to keep up with things that were taking place. Some of you probably know better than me. I've heard the building was on and off the market multiple times over the years. Um, we ended up purchasing the building in 2020. I will always remember the timing of purchasing the building because we purchased this about six, seven weeks before the COVID shutdowns. So prior to going into this purchase, um, the marriage hub where I work, uh, we work with couples that are in crisis. We bring couples in for marriage intensive retreats. We spend multiple days with these couples. And pre-COVID, we were looking for a place that we could house these couples as well as run our program. So we had, um, we had offices, Bart's building for quite a few years. Great place, but we had nowhere to put our couples for housing. And pre-COVID, we were running into issues that um, E-Town's got some, some great groups, but when they do big events, they take up all the housing in the community. So when E-Town College does big stuff, sorry, you mess us up, we, there's no ability for us to do housing in the area. You guys took up everything. When you do you know, graduations and homecomings, when Spooky Nook started doing big events, they took up everything. And, you know, at that era, it was really rough. Um, Hershey, when they did the RV show, when they do the classic car shows, you could not get a part or you couldn't get hotels in this area. So we were basically saying our ministry is growing and we're finding all these weekends that it's really hard for us to find housing for our couples to come. We need to control our own destiny. And for us, the goal was to either build or purchase a place that we could convert into some type of a boutique hotel. I told John we weren't happy with him. He shut me out in his area. We were looking at buying Westridge bed and breakfast back in the day, but it didn't work for zoning. Come on, John. <laughs> but so uh, we started looking at a couple of different things. Um, we actually tried in another borough, and we had uh, you know a, a contract for 10 acres of land, virgin land, that we were going to convert into a place. That fell through. We ran into a zoning issue. We kind of sat around saying, where in the world is there a place that's zoned correctly? We could put in housing, has enough space, already has the proper electric, water, everything that's going into it. And one of my board members said, what about the old Moose building? And I had been driving back and forth in E-Town for, I don't know, seven years every day past the building. I didn't even know what it was. I had no idea. I'd never been in the building. I, I didn't even know what the Moose was. I don't know. I thought there were people with funny hats. Sorry. But, you know, I had no idea what was going on there. See? And uh, anyway, we decided to take a walk, um, went down toward the building, looked at it and said, man, this would be perfect. So our pre-COVID plan was to purchase this building 
And this is some of the drawings and uh, architectural work that we had done. We were moving forward with plans, everything, that we were going to convert this building into a three-story um, boutique hotel. This would have been the basement floor. We were going to have hotel rooms up underneath where the theater area stuff. We were going to have some conference rooms, office areas. We were, had drawings for what it was going to look like as you build it up. The next floor was going to have more hotel rooms. We've got office space, bathrooms, conference stuff. We were going to um, have to put in some glass escape towers that were on the different sides of the building. We had this whole plan all in place. This was what the top floor was going to be. We were going to restore the ballroom. We were going to have elevators in place. Ultimately, the goal was we were going to have about a 20-bedroom um, boutique hotel that we were planning on putting here. It, on that spot, we were going to keep the front exterior of the building was pretty much going to look the same. Inside, it was basically going to be gutted. That's what we were shooting for. So again, six, seven weeks before the shutdowns, this was our goal. We had done feasibility studies. We talked with donors. We had you know, plans all in place. And we had met with multiple construction companies. We had a construction company that we were going to work with. We were told the whole project was going to be about 3.2 to 3.5 million dollars. We held a gigantic kickoff fundraising event down at um, the illustrious feeding trough of Lancaster County, Shady Maple. We were having 400 people come out to this thing. And I remember getting a phone call from this one lady that she said, I can't come to your fundraising event because of this weird COVID thing. And I remember thinking how stupid this person is that they wouldn't show up to our fundraising event because they were worried about some virus that I had never even heard of. Well, naturally, I was the idiot. Our plans <laughs> ended up getting blown up. And over the course of the next six to eight months in contact with contractors and other things, um, our, our plans literally just got blown to smithereens. You guys that are in the construction world or financing world, you know what it's like. The, uh, the contractors came back to us and said, your project's not going to be 3.2 to 3.5 million. It's going to be closer to $6.8 million. And at that point, we looked at it and said, that's just, it, we would never get our money out of it. It wouldn't be worth it. It's going to be way too hard. But a couple other interesting things happened. A couple hotels did come online that specifically catered to the Nook. So the, the Spooky Nook sporting stuff kind of eased. During COVID, tons of people put money into their homes and started turning their homes into Airbnbs. And I, I think the number in E-Town alone in the first eight months of COVID, 37 Airbnbs opened up in E-Town alone in, in the general area. So we started looking at that and saying, man, let's just see what it's like. Are we gonna keep running into housing issues? We have this building. What's it like if we just start slowly renovating this building in some of the ways that it was originally designed for, what if we used some of the same concepts that the Moose originally had, that they had spaces in the building that were designed for profit, if we rented space out, used it that way, didn't do a huge construction project, but slowly over time and as funding came in and volunteers were available, we slowly started rebuilding this thing in some of the original way that it was. And that became our design. The other cool thing, and this was some of the pictures of the areas of the building when we purchased it. It was in disrepair in certain areas. Um, they, they had significant sewage areas uh, in the basement. At one point when I was touring the building before we bought it, we had to build up a whole area of two by fours to kind of walk on a plank across because there was so much sewage down in there, it was bad. Anyway, the one cool thing that COVID did for us is due to the shutdowns, there were a lot of businesses, friends of the ministry that had construction companies, other stuff, and their businesses were completely shut down. And not only that, they're paying their guys with these payroll loans that they were getting, these PPP loans. Well, one of my friends calls me up and he says, Jeff, I got all my guys sitting around on their rear. They want to do stuff. You guys are a nonprofit. Is there any chance you guys are exempt and I can send my construction guys into your building to do some volunteer work. I'm already getting payment for them through these loans. Would that be possible? So that's a great question. So I reached out to our local uh, authorities and other people, and they said, yeah, you guys are exempt. You're a nonprofit. You can have volunteers come out to your building all you want. So we started over the span of the next two, three months that we had tons of construction companies come in, 
Um, we did all sorts of work to get rid of all the mold, all the destructive stuff. Um, we, we literally had spots in the basement where the walls, the, the top 18 inches were completely like chewed out with drywall and everything that we were just pushing walls over and getting rid of stuff. Glenn, we filled 11 large construction dumpsters just of all the junk and everything that was going on there. These are some of the pictures of just some of the demo work, trying to get rid of everything that was down there. Um, this piece, or th this whole project, just to clean out the basement, we were originally quoted about half a million dollars, and we ended up doing the entire thing with free work. The only thing we did was we paid for the dumpsters, which I think cost me about $21,000, which was amazing. So just some shots of going in there, digging out all the stuff, everything that was porous in the basement had to come out. We just, we literally had to rip it all out because it was in such poor shape down there. I even got my kids working. That's my youngest, made him carry some buckets. There's one of my other kids. We had them loading up dumpsters and throwing things out. Um, they weren't going anywhere, they didn't have school. So I figured, why not? We're gonna have some fun doing things here. Um, my oldest was actually at Dauphin County Technical School. I live in Harrisburg. And uh, he was there in their masonry program. And he and his one buddy, um, they had nothing to do. So he and his friend actually came in and repointed the entire basement and spent a whole summer. I, I paid them dirt cheap labor amounts. I think I paid them eight bucks an hour. They were thrilled. They were 15 years old, you know, couldn't do anything else. And they did a wonderful job repointing the entire basement down there. Um, we had Amish construction crews out there that were helping us out. This is the Amish guys coming in, carrying out some old HVAC equipment from like the 1930s that no longer worked. Um, it, it was pretty incredible, dumping stuff all over the place. And the other thing we did is by finally getting rid of all the stuff, we were able to dry out a lot of the basement. It was always wet. The other cool thing, some of you guys know that the Kanoi Creek, not the Chickies Creek, I'll learn. The Kanoi Creek um, was completely redesigned by the E-Town Borough, I don't know how many years ago. They got Army Corps of Engineers in, they redesigned stuff, redid walls, redid the bridge down here, right across from Lucky Duck. And in doing all of that, they actually changed the entire floodplain. Our building is no longer considered on the flood map. So we decided we're gonna try and get this basement as dry as we possibly could so that we have the potential for doing stuff in the future with it. What's cool is um, we found stuff that we didn't even know was in the basement. Um, back in the day, there used to be windows down to the basement area. They had a lot of natural light that was in there um, that at some point we'd love to open up for future construction type things, but it's real cool looking down in that area that was down there. We also had a ton of volunteers come in and say, hey, we're going to help you guys redo stuff and get this building usable for your ministry. Um, Bart, I apologize. We left. We, we no longer rented from Bart because we had a building and we said, let's, we got to, we can't be paying two things here. You know, we're paying a building loan, plus we're also paying BART. So we had our, um, some volunteers come in and uh, they fixed up enough of the building for us so that we could move our ministry offices down there and we could start running our program out of the building. They did an incredible job with helping us out with stuff. Um, over time, we expanded and the area that was the bar on the corner where they got rid of all the, the windows and put in the paneling, the ministry kept growing. Unfortunately, COVID was not good for marriages. I think a lot of you can understand that connection. You know, times where husbands and wives are at work, they're now spending all this time together. Our, our program spiked drastically after the COVID time. So we needed to set up um, multiple conference rooms. So we redid this space. I've got a bunch of before and after pictures for you. And I apologize, they're a little smaller, but my goal is to entice you if you wanna come take a visit with me. I'd be thrilled to walk down and walk you through the building if you want. But before and after, this is the upstairs ballroom that's there. We do now have a group that's renting the entire ballroom upstairs. Um, it, if you've heard of Exalt Dance, they, they're up there um, almost every evening. They got salsa classes. They got ballroom dancing classes in the evening. Sign up. They got a lot of cool things going on there. Um, they renovated the entire place up there, redid the original wood floor. Um, got the place in really, really nice shape for what's going on up there. Um, this is some of the bathrooms that were up there. They redid the whole foyer area up in that place. Looks really nice. Um, this is the hallway. It, those that remember, if you were to walk in um, behind this wall, 
is where the original doors are that go underneath the marquee. So when the Moose did their renovation in the 80s, they shut those doors. The, um, the flooring there used to be sloped to go down to where the, um, the doors are there. And they decided to make it straight and they opened that whole area into their bar area. So they wanted to have larger space for pool and you know gaming, all that kind of stuff. We shut that area back up again um, so that we could have separate conference rooms back in the place like it originally would have been and did some renovations in that area. Um, that's what the bar area had looked like when we purchased it. Um, that was inside that area. We tried to see if anybody wanted their old ceiling tiles. Nobody came back for them. I, there were a few that some people must have taken. Well, they were. I, I will tell you, the amount of smoke in that building was insane. I mean, we were taking um, you know, mops and other stuff and going along the walls with stuff. And it just was, I mean, nicotine coming like crazy. We ripped up every single part of flooring that we possibly could. I had a professional company come in and do cleaning for us. Our whole building smelled like a swimming pool at one point because they were doing these like chlorine treatments to try and get rid of the smell. It's pretty amazing. But I will tell you, it doesn't smell anymore. So if you come in there now, you can't tell it was smoked in ever. Um, but that's what the front area looks like now with the windows back in, um, putting in, we put in a conference room in the corner there compared to what the bar used to look like back at the time. Um, this is the other side of the building where the Moose had their offices. So this is kind of facing Rita's on the corner there. We have another intensive suite where we run our program out of. My office is in the back there under that family sign, some of our other offices in that area. We were able to have volunteers come in and help us renovate this whole thing. It was pretty amazing. Um, just some of the pictures of what it looks like. Again, pictures are hard to tell with some of this. If you walked in the building, super excited to show you. The theater space, this is what it looked like before. Um, the, that was the only area that we, we couldn't totally get all the smell out of that carpet. And uh, we were given a nice gift about two years ago, um, specifically earmarked just to renovate the theater space. And we were able to go in, put in all new carpeting. We were able to redo the lights, the old historic lights that are in there that look like the big candles on the side of the wall. Those are from the 20s, um, original Art Deco stuff. And uh, we actually found a stained glass window shop. The guy here in E-Town, we tried to meet with him, but I think he's closed or something. Um, so we found a, a shop up in Harrisburg that was able to redo the stained glass so that we could get all of those lights back and working correctly. Um, we ended up putting in columns again in the theater space. When uh, Urban originally designed the building, that theater space had pretty columns. If you look back to that original picture I showed you guys, and when the Moose did their renovations in the 80s, they put in a drop ceiling and covered all the columns that were there. So they dropped the ceiling height by about 12 feet and put in all their HVAC up above that. And a lot of the pretty areas of the building were up above there with the columns, ceiling stuff. So we did some work to try and get the look back to what it would have been a lot more like when it was originally. That's not the new screen. We also have a new screen that we got put in. It's extra wide, fills up the whole space. Um, had Claire Brothers come out and put in a really nice system for us so that we can show much nicer things in there. And it's now a movable screen that goes up and down so we can actually have the front space of that opening area in the proscenium as well as the theater look with the uh, screen and everything there. So just some other pictures. Hard to see some of these things. All new lighting in there. Um, the basement area doesn't look incredibly different for some stuff, but it's cleaned out and we got to the point where we had to go all the way back to rock and brick and stone just because that was what we needed to. That area right now is completely empty. Um, it's kind of fun looking, kind of catacombsy type of a feel. If any of you want it to rent, uh, I actually have occupancy for it. And I, we have had some people rent space down there, but that's for us, you know, as we need future growth, something of that nature, but we don't necessarily need that space. So it's just sitting empty at the moment, but it is kind of cool looking. Um, this was Tuesday night. We were really excited. The uh, Elizabethtown Historical Society had um, their Peshtak Historical Site Awards that they were giving out. 
and they awarded us a, a award for historical preservation with the building. Um, that was a really cool honor that they gave us from that. Some of you guys ask, who, you know, what do we do there? So we actually have two websites for our ministry. One website is themarriagehub.com. That's our marriage piece. The large majority of our clientele doesn't come from E-Town. We run intensives here in Lancaster in our home office. We run them in Maryland. We run them in North Carolina, Southern California, Arizona, and uh, we're expanding out to different regions. Um, so that website doesn't really have anything local about our ministry on there. So we created a website specifically for the building that has all of our local type things that are taking place. So can't really see the top there, but if you go to the etownelizabeth.com. That's our local website for the local building, local events that we do out of there. If you go on there, you can see all kinds of different stuff about the history of the building. Um, if you click on that link, that'll show you a lot of the things that we had there. Some of the old pictures are on there as well. We also have a spot because we've taken the mindset like the Moose did, that we would be thrilled to gain some revenue out of that facility. It's a beautiful place to do community stuff. And you can feel free to rent our building. Um, be thrilled to have you do it. We've got a lot of great stuff there, capability of doing some neat conferences, trade groups, you name it. We've got space and would love to have you guys out there doing stuff there. So we've got information there on how to rent the facility. Um, we've got the layout, what we have at the facility, tables, chairs, all that kind of stuff. Um, we also do local events here at the building. So every single month we're doing date nights because we're a marriage ministry. So we sponsor date nights. Coming up, the next one we have is a pumpkin carving night. We did a paint night. We've done some marriage-related movies. We've done all kinds of different things. They're a ton of fun if you want to come out. We try and keep them cheap. They're not really expensive, but a great way to come out, you know, enjoy one of the local establishments for dinner, and then do a fun activity um, with a purposeful date night for you and your spouse. We're doing a traditional marriage conference. This will be the second one that we're going to be doing out of the facility. And our goal is that we do one in the like, spring-ish, early spring kind of time, one in the fall every year that we'll be doing as well. Um, we also have gotten really heavily involved in the Christmas stuff that's taking place. Uh, during COVID, everything was dark. You know, Nobody was going anywhere. We had just bought this building. And I don't know how it came about. Um, we were kind of looking out at this big tree that was kind of in our courtyard area and said, wouldn't it be fun if E-Town had a Christmas tree, you know, community Christmas tree that we could do? And one of the guys in our team said, hey, I'll buy lights. Let's string up lights out there. And we decided to do a Christmas tree lighting in 2020. I think we had about 75, 80 people out there for it. And somehow that thing has just springboarded. If any of you were at the Christmas tree lighting last year, there was well north of 1,000, maybe 1,500 people that were out there for the tree lighting. The chambers involved in planning for it. Tons of businesses are involved now. We've got all kinds of stuff going on with it. It's becoming a really gigantic event. We're thrilled to be able to host that. We also do some Christmas movies. Um, so we're doing an old historic movie with like a dinner date night in December which is kind of fun, come out, see an old classic movie. We jazz it up, have nice treats and stuff for you. And then we also try and do a um, just a general movie for families. We set the price for the family one. It's $2 a ticket and $5 maximum for a family. And we do it because we want people to come out. Movies are expensive. A lot of people can't pay those kind of things. So we want to make it you know, a, a token payment so they know they're doing something and they actually show up, um, but a way that people can enjoy it and have some fun. I'm done. <laughs> that was a lot.